A question regarding the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. When as comparing as well. the belief uh, the Shias have about the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to the Sunni belief about him, how can the Shia claim theirs is better? The Shia often say they have a better belief about the Prophet, more respectful, more loyal, more holy, pure than Sunnis. But what is the evidence, particularly when you don't believe in his best companions? Okay. Okay, I would like the, pro the brother or the sister who put this question to listen to me carefully. Companions of all the prophets, as you read in Quran, are not prophets. And they are human beings. Among the companions of all the prophets, you find good, pious, and you find bad. Read Quran and see. The companions of Musa alayhi salam, when Musa left his companions for 40 days, and he returned, he found majority of them worshipping the animal, right or wrong? And he told his companions, بِئْسَ مَا خَلَفْتُمُونِ مِنْ بَعْدِي بِئْسَ مَا خَلَفْتُمُونِ مِنْ بَعْدِي Was attitude you had after me. The companions of Isa alayhi salam, some of them were pious, but some of them were not. And within his own companions were those who informed the enemies of, of Jesus about Jesus to come and kill him. The companions of every prophet are either following him or not following him. All those who sincerely followed the Prophet are respected. But among the companions of any Prophet, you find many who committed sins, means they disobeyed the Prophet. We look at the companions exactly as we read in Quran. In Quran, you find that Allah praises some companions, some, not all. Allah says, وَاتَّبَعُوهُ Those who followed him. But those companions who disobeyed him, Allah in Quran blames them and attacks them يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ عَصَوُ الرَّسُولِ Those who disobey the Prophet, they will wish in the Day of Judgment will be on the ground. They wish that they are being finished because they will see the hellfire in front of them. In Quran, Allah says that إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَفْقَهُ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Those who call you, O oh Prophet, those who call you behind, from behind the rooms, most of them have no senses. In Quran you find many verses blaming many companions. In Surah Al-Jumu'ah, and everyone from us recites or listens to Surah Al-Jumu'ah every Friday, Allah says, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهُوًا انْفَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا If they see a trade or amusement, 
they will go towards it and leave you standing. Imagine, the Prophet was standing reciting the khutbah of Jum'ah. While he was reciting, reading, saying, speaking to them, they used to hear the voice of the caravan of trade entering Medina. And the caravan used to use drums to inform their arrival. The Prophet was in his khutbah. Most of people in the masjid of the Prophet left the Prophet standing and went towards that caravan. You know how many companions did not go? You will not believe it. You will not believe it. All of them went except only 12. 12 only. Only 12 who are Ali, Hassan, Hussein, Salman, Abu Dhar. 12. Only 12 people remained in the masjid. The Prophet was in his khutbah. Allah in Quran recorded this incident which was repeated many times during the life of the Prophet. So, how can you claim that all the companions are equal? No. We greatly respect those companions who followed and obeyed the Prophet till the end of their lives. But those companions who disobeyed the Prophet? When the Prophet was in, on his deathbed, as you read in Bukhari. In Bukhari, this hadith was narrated many times. The Prophet said, get me something to write for you. I will write for you a statement that you will never go astray after me. What happened? Some of the companions said, yes, we have to obey the Prophet. But some of them say, no, we will not obey him. So between these two groups of com companions, there was a dispute in front of the Prophet who was on his deathbed, whether to obey him or to disobey him. The Prophet was annoyed and he said, get out. Qumu anni. Qumu anni. Go out. This is mentioned in Bukhari, in Muslim, in Tirmidhi, almost in every book of hadith, which is called, the incident is called, Raziyyatu Yawm al Khamis, the calamity of Thursday. Mm. Ibn Abbas, the famous companion, <coughs> used to remember it and weep. He said that day, Thursday, when the Prophet ordered to get him Something to write for the Ummah. He wanted to write his last will. And they stopped him. And they said, Inna rajul la yahjur. The man is talking nonsense. So do you want to make those who disobey the Prophet like those who obeyed the Prophet? Those companions who disobeyed the Prophet, disobeyed him. That's why you find in the hadiths of the Prophet himself in Bukhari. In Bukhari. Hadith, which is well known by Hadith Al-Hawz. Hadith Al-Hawz. The Hadith of Pool. In Bukhari, I'll give you hadith number. Hadith number 498. 
in Bukhari. 498. Anas bin Malik. Anas was a servant, one of the servants of the Prophet. Anas was not praying with people during the time of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. He was praying in the masjid alone, not with the jama'at. He was being asked why. Anas said, ما أعرف شيئا مما كان على عهد النبي. He said, whatever was the religion on the time of the Prophet, now not existing. So they told him, even salah, قيل الصلاة. He replied, أليس ضيعتم ما ضيعتم فيها? Did you not? Waste what you have wasted from Salah. Means even Salah was even changed. That is in Bukhari itself. You find in Bukhari Hadith is that on the Day of Judgment Many of the companions will come and they will be ordered to the hellfire. The Prophet will say, Oh my Lord, they are my companions. My companions. Allah will reply him, You don't know what they committed after you. Go to Hadith number 4259 in Bukhari. 4259. I'm giving the hadith number, not the page, because there are different editions. And usually I quote the Arabic edition, not the translation. In this hadith, narrated from Ibn Abbas, that in the day of Qiyamah, Number of people from my ummah will be ordered to go to the hellfire. I will say, Oh my Lord, O Sahabi, O Sahabi, my companions, my companions, Allah will reply me, la tadri ma ahdathu ba'dak. You don't know what they did after you. So don't claim that the Shia Muslims have less respect to the Prophet. In fact, we respect the Prophet completely and we don't respect anyone who disobeyed the Prophet, being companion, being even the Prophet's anyone, anyone from his even family member, anyone who disobeyed the Prophet has no respect. Because we are following Quran. In Quran, Allah is telling us that even the wife of Noah and wife of Lut, wives of great prophets. You know, Noah is one of the five Ulul Azm, greatest prophets. Despite being wives of prophets, but when they disobeyed Allah, قِيلَتْ خُلَ النَّارَ مَعَ الدَّاخِلِينَ they were being sent to hellfire. This is Quran. We are following Quran and the authentic hadiths of the Prophet. If you want to see our respect to the Prophet, I can give you examples. We don't accept any hadith in any book, including Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, Abi Dawood, any book of hadith, any narration which makes the status of the Prophet less is rejected. 
Do you know that there are hadiths in Bukhari and Muslim claiming things which cannot be accepted at all about the Prophet? Let me give you some example. I don't want to claim. I'll give you just the hadith number and I leave it to you. Go and read. Okay. I want to ask you, if you see a boy of 10 years or 8 years, a boy, urinating standingly on the road. What you will think about him? Is he doing something moral, good? Everyone will say, no, 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 this is very bad. This boy is doing wrong. Right? Now, go to Bukhari. Hadith number 217. I know it is shocking. But see the disrespect of the Prophet. Hadith number 217. The Hadith claims, of course, it's not Hadith, it is false narration. We don't call it Hadith. But it's in Bukhari. 217, narration in Bukhari. The Prophet came to <coughs> a place belongs to some people. And he urinated standingly. Astaghfirullah. 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 Atta al-Nabiyyu. Subatata qawman. Fabala qaiman. Prophet came. Subata is the part of land which is joining any house. Like say garden or back garden. He came to a place belongs to people, not his place. And he standingly urinated. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. This is the respect. In Bukhari as well, hadith number 218. Narration. That the, the narrator claims that I was walking with a prophet and we reached to a place, piece of land belongs to people. So he stood and urinated standingly. Astaghfirullah. In Bukhari, can anyone accept this behavior? From whom? From the best human being about whom Allah has said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Surely you are of great manners. And they put such allegations on the Prophet that he used to behave in this way. This nonsense which are called Narrations can never be accepted by any Muslim who knows the respect of the Prophet. The subject is very big subject. But no doubt the respect that the Shia Muslims have for the Prophet cannot be compared at all with what you see in the main books. I don't quote any book. No, I quoted Bukhari, which is, according to majority of our Sunni brothers and sisters, the most authentic book after Quran, according to them. But we say that Bukhari has got good hadiths and false fabricated narrations. And these examples are of the fabricated ones. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. So we have two callers with us. Yes. Thank you.